All right, guys, Officer Hoover's in town, and he's going to take some time to go over some load securement and oversized load regulations with us and address a few of your guys' concerns in the comments. The weather's not the best. We're going to try to make the best out of it. Stick around. All right, guys, it's official. I have rounded up the one, the only, Officer Hoover. Rounded up? I'm pretty sure I rounded you off. <laughs> well, all right, we'll, we'll all right. go Technically, we're in the parking lot, not on the side yeah. of the road, but this yeah. video is for you guys. We're going to go over some tips, tricks, some do's, some don'ts, and I'm sure you're going to spout off a few uh, numbers out of the federal regulations oh, yeah. book at some point. Well, you so. you got you to gotta have the federal regs. All right, so we're going to try to hit the hot topic items on load securement. I know you guys comment on a lot of my videos about different things I do and different things you think that's right and wrong. So first off, Officer Hoover, let's talk about the equipment itself. Oh, all right. We'll <laughs> talk about the equipment. All right, so when it comes to loading heavy equipment, load securement of heavy equipment, First thing is that if anybody wants to go fax, check, great. Uh, federal regulations, there's 393-130. 393-130, that yep. is a very important one. That covers yes. most of what we need yes. to know. Yes, most of what we need to do. 393-130 covers the loading of heavy equipment. And this is equipment greater than 10,001 pounds. So when you got any form of piece of equipment greater than 10,001 pounds with tracks, wheels, anything like that, first thing you gotta have is four independent corners. Okay. So now, four, can I can I can I yes, jump in here real in. quick? Yes. I, this is one question. Always always I have, and I got it right on top of my head. Mm -hmm. Can I attach to the track? Yes. What? Yes. Did you hear that? He yes. said what? Yes. All right. That that is an acceptable means. Um, yes, we can argue about this and that and bolting and, and and you're exactly right. Now, if I notice the track is bent, or in some cases you got your mounting bolts, if those are starting to break or, or there's an issue there, it's just like if the, the rub rail was cracked or bent or broken or anything like that. It's where you secure to, so yeah. That now, is, an that, acceptable, is acceptable that an Indiana means. regulation or is no, that a federal? federal? That is that's a federal. federal. Now, does the state have the authority to adapt something different? Um, they can. But typically, when it comes to something like this, they don't because the federal regs are pretty tight and stringent. And with a lot of this stuff, they can't. They can do something similar, or but they can't ever. They so can if make you're it more aggressive, but they can't make it. So if you're running less. in the continental United States, yes. you're telling me it is perfectly legal to hook my chain or binder yes. to that mm -hmm. per 393. 130. 393, 130. Yeah. So guys, if you ever get stopped, if you got questions about that, attitude Just, attitude is everything. Attitude's everything. Attitude's and, everything. And there's different ways. You know, don't be like, well, I got a question, or this Hoover guy in Indiana said this. Just say, hey, can I ask you a question on this? You know, uh, what what do you see? What do you guys like to see? What what's best practice? Because when you look at 393, 130, it says minimum four tie downs. And of course, when you read the whole 100 section, if you're really tore up into this and really want to learn about it. Go to 393-100 and read it all the way through, all the way through the, the stuff. But yeah, because what it talks about, you know, whatever securement devices have to have proper damage-free mounting locations, all of that. And that's the same way. When it comes to equipment, some newer equipment may on the inside have tabs or hooks that is a manufacturer-rated, manufacturer-meant-to hook spot. You can utilize those as well. But the bare minimum, 393-130 says, four independent corners so this is independent meaning it's not hooked to that side now there has been an update if in, in this case here you can see oh uh, dp has taken, uh, <laughs> has taken and made some shorter chains that's just fine but if he had a long chain and had the slack going over and then had the other part of the chain there that's absolutely fine here in the last year or so They've adopted that, and they said, yes, that is perfectly fine. That's going to count as the two the two separate uh, tie So it, it can be there. one chain, but it has to be used as two separate two ones, and separate it has to have ones. slack in between. Exactly. Which, exactly. you guys see me tie down the way I used to tie down stuff. That's what I did, and that would be considered acceptable. Yes, that would be considered acceptable. Now, depending on what you got, some of the big dozers or whatever, say it's got that center pin, um, you can bring two chains in and come down separate but you cannot run one chain up through and down 
even though it's coming down this way, coming down this way, if it's still one chain, it's still considered so one. So you can tie it off to a to... center point, but you got to have two separate yes. chains pulling yes. either way. Separate ways. So, separate ways. so this is over uh, 10,000 pounds. So we got to have four corners, four and then corners. we got to cover 50 percent of the of the load of 50 percent of the weight of the machine. Correct. Correct. So correct. for easy math, let's just say this thing weighs 30,000 pounds. Yeah. So we would have to cover 15,000 pounds with our working load limit. So, okay. What, we, what we're going to do when it comes to this, we've looked at everything. There's no bends, no breaks. The chain's in good quality. There's no bends, twists, uh, bent links like that. We'll show you what those look like here in just a minute. I may so, have one on the truck. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the, you, thanks for setting up the example. <laughs> so we've looked at this. This binder here is rated at 9,200 pounds, and you can see that right there. All right, this chain here is a grade 70. We've looked at it. And it's going to be 6,600 pounds. But in in the codes, whenever you got something mounted to the trailer, to the item you're securing, like this setup right here, it gets 50% of the weakest working load limit. So this chain would only get 3,300 pounds. So that in that configuration, that tie down goes 3,300 pounds towards my 15,000. Towards your 15,000. Okay. And then so if we looked at all four of the corners. And they're all matching, same chain, same binders, all good tight, everything's kosher. Then you'd have four times 3,300. I'm not good at math, are you? Uh, no. So, so what, four times, you know. Four times three is 12. 12, and then add some others. So we're getting closer. We're getting closer. We'll just call it 15. It, it, that, <laughs> the power of YouTube, you can put the correct answer right there later, right? So, so let, while we're talking about that. Um, let's go up and look. Now, where are we going to get this? Uh, so we're not quite there yet. We've let's just say let's corners. just say we're at 12 and we got our four corners. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if anybody wants to check the math, that's fine. I'm going to come around to this um, side over here so we can get yeah. a good. So, again, we're, we're matching up. Now, another requirement of 393-130 is that any accessory equipment like this, boom, shovels, front end loaders, um, anything like that has to have a separate tie down on the accessory equipment. Now there are some exceptions like um, you got the backhoe stabilizers. Those can be stored in the upright position. You got the, the blades for trenchers that come down. Those can be up. You got some smaller equipment, less than 10,000, like your smaller. I'm sure it's got a safety latch to latch that up. You can do that. Back, I'd say backhoes and trenchers are probably the most common to have a transport exactly. lock. Exactly, a transport lock on them. Now, with that being said, you can see this chain goes up and over and comes yep. down. So, so it so starts it there, starts all the way there, up in there. Goes from... up and over and down to the passenger side. That's the key. This outfit here gets 100% of its working load limit. So we get the full 66. Full 6600 of the chain. Because remember, we got to look at the chain, the binder. He's got these big heavier binders, which is great. Not a problem. But it just makes our chain. So you're going to be judged off your weakest link the weakest is the link. simplest yes. way to put it. Yes, whether it be a binder whether it be a chain on that. So that, so the four corners gets me to 12. This gets me over 15, yep. which gets me covering my 50% of my weight. Now, if mm -hmm. one of these, if one of these chains is damaged or one of them's loose, I'm in trouble. Absolutely. So that's where throwing that extra chain comes in handy sometimes because you got wiggle room for a possible failure. Exactly. And, and I, I love my little phrase, when in doubt, throw another chain because it, it never fails. You get stopped by one of us for a DOT inspection. You get back there, the machine's kind of moved, settled a little bit. We come by, oh man, now we got one loose. You know, so that, that helps you with that additional chain. Okay. So, um, so yeah, we looked at this. So we'll talk about, we'll talk about some other possible uh, equipment scenarios, but another thing people have a lot of questions about is attaching to this rub rail and how Absolutely. we attach to the trailer. So this, Absolutely. we got a couple good examples right here yep. of how I done yep. it. So All what's right. what would be considered proper and what can be considered improper? Okay, so the first thing is, um, the big question, we'll, we'll knock this out of the park on the first go. The big question is, can you secure something to the rub rail and can it be outside the rub rail? Yes, in the continental United what? States. You can attach the rub rail? Yeah. No way. Yeah, you can. You can. There's is you can utilize the rub rail as a means of securement. But along with that, you need to go through and you need to be ever vigilant on these pocket welds where it's attached, the rub rail itself. So, you know, you got to make sure these are good, adequate strengths. There's a little bit of a bend, but if there was starting to be any cracking, 
that's a no-go so watch that and then the way this chain is hooked on the outside here in the, the continental lower 48 the united states we allow it to be outside of now the rubber. again is this an indiana regulation or is this a federal regulation this is a federal regulation. so if you're in the lower 48 states yeah or the continental 48 yep. states this is a federal reg yep this is a federal reg now if you're in canada if any canadian viewers um they don't want anything outside the rubber rail now a few years ago back like 2006 2007 uh it was in the regulations that nothing could be outside of the rubber rail but they have removed that from the federal regs things are always changing and so never assume that you you something you read or, or you knew about 10 years ago don't don't assume that it's still the same way always be willing to learn something new and like i said having a good attitude about it if the inspector says something say hey that must have changed you know even ask for the code say hey what code is that or you know i i love it when when drivers ask i'll print it out for them give them that information education so that, education yeah. and attitude are king it, it goes it goes because ultimately at the end of the day i want this equipment to stay on this trailer i want him to go home safe i want the motoring public to go home safe so that's just something to, something to consider if you got a question ask that inspector tap that resource and, and you may be surprised all right so a couple other a couple other types of equipment that I guess people tie down. I guess the one big one to hit would be articulated equipment. Mm -hmm. And you got two options on articulated equipment. One is you got to use the factory provided transport lock mm -hmm. so it cannot articulate, mm -hmm. or you have to throw a chain. Yes, chain. And so let's just kind of use this for an example. You got your articulation, you typically find a chain coming down and a chain coming down. Now, where that would be useful instead of utilizing or in addition to utilizing that factory lock is a lot of times those articulated dump trucks, they're greater than 30. So we're gonna have two in the front, two in the rear. And you gotta have but two in the due middle. due to the weight, you need some additional tie downs. So throwing those in the middle is gonna get you past that, that weight for your working load limit. So, and then the other thing that is very equipment specific, I guess would be the best way to put that, is making sure that your accessory attachments are chained down properly. You mentioned loader. We have a Traco here as an example, a bulldozer blade. Yes, and, and with the and bulldozer, you bring up a very good point because some bulldozers, their, their blades are, are real permanent attachments to it. Um, and the discussions come up, well, if I attach to this blade, is it the same as the front? And my, my word of advice on this is go ahead, get your two in the rear, hook your tracks, and then also do your blade. You're gonna have a lot less to worry about and a lot less gray area for that roadside inspector to maybe see it a little differently. So why not take that extra second, throw an extra throw chain, chain and not have not It goes have back to what issues. you said before, when in doubt, throw an extra chain. When in doubt, throw another one, exactly. All right, guys, we come around here to the other side of the truck. We actually had a truck, a chain on the trailer that is a good example of one that would not be acceptable for use. All right, so um, what we talked about was load bearing portion of the chain. And what we want to stay away from are defects in the chain because you can have that chain just as tight and not going to go anywhere but when you start to get defects like what we're seeing right here this is going to make this chain no good so that, that chain's perfectly straight it's the, it's the water on the lens that makes it look well, curved yeah yeah <laughs> you know it maybe maybe but but i i would definitely a, resort this to uh i would definitely resort this to a just pulling stuck stuck trucks out of the ditches i think like what that. the but important thing is here is just like you inspect your truck or pre-trip your truck you need to pre-trip or check all your load securement from your boomers from your hooks because another big thing is and we don't have one hanging here handy is making sure it has the the hook has the proper cotter pin in it yeah and the keeper the chain has the proper links and uh what you said there's a tool you can get yes yes in the all-knowing tool pouch of uh don't worry, I will not litter. I will pick that up. I <laughs> All right, so so what this is, and I wish if anybody from Brake Tech Tools is watching, um, I love your love your stuff. I'd love to be a sponsor. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> Brake Tech sponsor. Tools, yeah, find Brake Officer Tech Uber. Tools, find me, please. Um, so what this is, Brake Tech Tools, it's uh, their, their chain gauge. So what we got on the one side is we can basically size this chain and determine it's a 3 8 the other side you see is marked OOS. What, is, what that's marking is this hole is 20 percent less than this one so if i can fit any part of this chain whether it be a nick a gouge or right 
Yeah, so see how this chain is gouged? If I can fit that in there, so see how that's fitting in there? Granted, it's not 100%, but you can see the vast majority of yeah. three quarters of that chain's in there. That means that the, this, basically, if I was just looking at nothing but this, that's going to be enough damage that the chain would need to come off. Now, say, what's, you know, we talked about what happens, and I bet, I bet you've used this chain a couple times the same spot, maybe work these around the uh, pocket or whatever, but a lot of times we'll see some chains. Some of our uh, really nice smooth Indiana roads. Yeah, ex exactly. And if you want a smooth road, go to the Indianapolis 500, best two and a half miles of uh, <laughs> asphalt you'll find in the state of Indiana. Um, but on this, you know, you could probably see it. I, I bet if I had to, that's probably been in a pocket for a while. Yep. But now with this being said, you can see there's still a lot of good chain here. You can still use other portions of the chain. So if you're using the chain from here to here. Yeah, let's say here to here. If this was your load bearing portion or you decide to cut the chain down, make sure you use good links. And if this was in the load bearing portion, you can have this stuff hanging loose. Like, like we said, if it's hanging between, you can have it hanging loose. You just can't have it in the load bearing portion of the, uh, the chain. All right, guys, I hope that answers a lot of the load securement questions. There's, we could go on and on for days about this and bore everybody to death. But uh, you have a very good resource. What, and there is a way for people to contact you. Absolutely, absolutely. I am the Facebook administrator for the Indiana State Police Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Division. Sounds a lot, but if you start to type in Indiana State Police Commercial, you're going to find us there. That's a Facebook page that I administer and run, and basically my goal is to answer these questions. Post helpful tips. Um, at no point are we trying to shame anybody or shame any drivers. That's not what I believe Unless in. Unless it's me. Hey, there was... You, you went on there and publicly made that yourself. <laughs> now, I can't help you give me good content once in a while. But the thing is, utilizing this thing, because how many... And, and, and Mike made a good point, you know, I, I posted on there, but how many people went on there and realized, huh, I never knew that, or I didn't think about that, or, huh, this is something else to think about. Well, he also posts, he just randomly posts stuff that he may find roadside or he may think of, and uh, one of them I remember is uh, fifth wheel bolts. You found a truck with loose fifth wheel bolts. Well, I don't look at those every day, but after I seen that post, I, I went by and looked at mine just to double check. And, and that's so, and, and you're exactly right, Mike, because that's so rewarding because um, I'll, I'll post something and and I'll have one or two guys go, hey, you know, I never thought about checking that. Look what I found on my truck or look what I found here. Or I was looking at this because what I'm trying to promote is doing a good thorough pre-trip. Am I saying that you have to spend an hour on your pre-trip each and every day? No, no, I'm not. I know you got to be busy and you got to get going, but it's kind of break it down throughout the week. You know, one day, really get in around your fifth wheel. Next day, really get in yeah, around your Yeah, in sections, so, you know, check the front axle right, one day. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. Now, I know this is going to be a little bit more Indiana Pacific than Federal Pacific, but while we got this load on here, let's start at the front of the truck and just quickly talk about um, oversized loads, permitting, and placarding. Oh. All right, guys, we're going to start off here at the front of the truck. I guess first thing here in Indiana I should mention is I carry an annual oversized load permit, which gets me up to 12 foot 6 wide with the exception of inner, the inner loop of Indianapolis. It does not give me any overweight, and it does not give me any over height. Correct? Correct. Okay, so now that I have the permit, how do I properly set my truck up to haul that? All right, so if anybody out there gets an Indiana permit, and this is a word of uh, advice, is if you get an Indiana permit, make sure you get the provision sheet. Because if you read it real close down at the bottom, it says, do you have the, per or basically this permit is void if the provision sheet is not carried with the Is that 397? 397 uh, sheet, I think it is. Three, yeah, 397 or three, yeah, three, 302 or something, something if you like that. But make sure you got that that provision sheet with that because in the provision sheet, it's going to outline all these specific requirements. And within the specific requirements, we're going to see the requirements for the wide load sign, the size, the dimensions, the parameters what it has to say. The flags, as far as the size of the flags, color of the flags, position of the flags, amber lights, um, what what vehicles are required amber lighting. 
for oversized loads. Now, in, really in Indiana, stuff. the only ones that are actually required is a mobile home mover, correct? Yes, mobile home transporters, which we kind of allow anybody with oversized loads. If they're loaded, we don't get too picky on that because we've also got buried in there. Um, we may say our, our required signage may say oversized load, um, but some states may require wide load. We, we go with whatever. So if a load is originates out a side of the state of Indiana, same thing with the lighting requirements as far as amber lighting. If another state requires something a little more in depth, we're pretty lax on that. We'll let that slide as long as it meets some sort of that requirement. Okay, so we got the front of our truck, yeah. wide load. We got our flags marked up yeah. here. I think these are supposed to be 18 inch red squares. Is yep. that correct? 18 inch red or I don't remember inch. the actual dimensions, but I do know it has to be at least two inch yeah. block letters. Two, and I think they have to be 12 inch, inch tall. Yep, yep. So, so if you read the Indiana permit, technically it would say oversized load. Yeah, I mean, guys, if we want to get picky about this, I am probably illegal because my words are split and they do not have the right verbiage. But as Officer Hoover stated, I did a professional job about it. And if I have a good attitude, I'll probably be all right. Yeah, so, I'll probably be all right. All right. So we're going to skip all the way to the back of the trailer at this point. And I guess it's pretty similar back here as well, isn't it? Yeah, it really is because you've got your, your flags. And a big question we get too is, is the flags required on the rear like this? Well, technically, it could be placed on the widest extremity of the load. So now see that I learned uh, something there is always thought it had to be the rear and the widest point. Yeah, um, it, technically it can be the widest part. This is just an additional plus it kind of provides traffic. Hey, heads up. There may be something sticking out. So and, and again, if you want to flag both go right ahead. But uh, yeah, okay. it can be. And then, like I said, so we're looking at it oversized load, the proper banner properly displayed something I get a lot is concerns about blocking the license plate blocking the lights don't try not to obscure the lights okay and my through a little bit of research with everyone else basically it came down to what about the plate I kind of go you know what if you're running loaded you need to have your oversized banner I'm not nearly as worried about the license plate but if you're running empty don't run your banner don't be obscuring your license plate. And, but, but but lights are very important not yes, to yes, not to absolutely mark absolutely try not to obscure at all of those lights this is kind of the what this kind of defeats whenever i'm hauling the track hoe these flags actually end up being the widest point from side to side if you guys seen me haul the 850 dozer the blade sticks out there farther i actually got magnetic flags i put on the blade and i still run these back here yep. i guess flags can kind of be like chains more the merrier more the more the merrier more the merrier. So, so you're you're never going to get in trouble for too much just like chains we're never going to get you for too many chains we're going to get you for unless you get them for overweight for too many chains, now, <laughs> a lot of chains but, and, and as soon as i said that i thought hmm. so all right guys i hope you found that useful huge thanks to officer hoover for answering a few questions for us don't forget i'll put a link in the uh, description of this video to his uh facebook page i actually got steve from speed binders here he's going to go over these binders with us real quick and show us uh the professional way to use them and give us a few things on them and uh stick around for that yeah i think that's it i think we covered her i think so thank you very yeah. much sir now you guys have seen it a good dot bear never gets wet or hungry <laughs> i'm not hungry but i am wet yeah so. the weather has not been cooperating with us today but we're uh we're hey. sticking it out for you guys yep all right thank you guys all right, guys, we just did the load securement video with Officer Hoover, and I have found Steve, Mr. Speedbinder himself, and he's going to give us a quick demonstration over the binder. So first off, I'll let you take it away, but these are the 9200s, is that correct? Yeah, these are the Torque Drive 9200s. It's a uh, 3 8 by half inch binder. We are DOT approved. Um, fits 3 8 and half inch chain, also fits 5 16 chain too, so it's pretty neat. But uh, basically, um, what we'll do is uh, unwind it for you. We're tight right now. And uh, well, let's just give everybody, a, give everybody a quick glimpse of the drill we're using as recommended. It's the DCD991. Right. And this drill is pretty awesome. It's uh, obviously a DeWalt. This has 880 power watts out, which is a lot of torque. And it actually has more torque than the uh, impact. Impact, you are allowed to use an impact. Um, I uh, have approved this. And this is lighter, it's 
more maneuverable. You can do it with one hand, which is really nice. So the drill, you're gonna get a little bit more twist. We're gonna go down to first speed, and I'm gonna cradle the battery pack with my left hand, but that is tight. Yep. I mean, that's bone tight. I think one thing important to explain is how the arm stays in contact with the trailer. Yes. Compared, compared to a conventional boomer, which also helps them keep them tight. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, what's happening here is the arm is actually a reaction bar. So these are placed so that they're against the floor of the trailer. They're against the track of an excavator, a dozer blade. But properly tensioned, um, you're going to have some, you know, effort to lift this up off the trailer. But that's what keeps them tight. So when you go over bridge abutments, railroad tracks, etc., uh, these aren't lifting up off the trailer. And a typical ratchet binder, you get to a point in time where your chain twists, and then you go to get more clicks to get it tighter, the chain untwists, and you're just, you're done. And that's that's the real deal. We've uh, I was explaining, I think the first video I did with these was holding the man lift, and you guys see me saying there, I can't believe these things are still tight because it never is. That's why. And another key to that is making sure the short side of this is towards the trailer, correct? Yes, that gets your handle towards the end. So if you have more of a vertical pull on the chain, uh, this is going to hit the floor of the trailer better and quicker. But yeah, you are correct. Without the twist, because we don't twist, we just do a total torqued pull, 25 to 1 gear reduction. No chain twist, just gets it really tight. We have had no issues at all getting these things tight or keeping these things tight. That has not even been a concern uh, one time with these. It's they've I don't, I, there's just, it's just not an issue. I don't know how else to say it. It's just not an issue. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Now, we've been using these things for uh, about three months now, I guess. Yeah. And we did start off with the drill, and this is just my review on this. The drill works really well, and it may get them a little tighter with less effort but it's not quite as convenient as the impact. I do believe the impact is going to be our tool of our choice, especially now that we know they're approved. It seems to work really well. It's a lot more convenient. Works great. You guys seen how we got the truck set up. I highly recommend them, guys. They, uh, I wasn't for sure about them when we first got them. After using them, we're sold. I've already ordered more from them. Uh, they've just been, they've been awesome. We've had no issues whatsoever. I still think this is one of the greatest things yet is, is oh, being thanks. serviceable. Yeah. Yeah, so. thank you. It's uh, and, and all parts are replaceable. If, if this breaks or something happens, uh, yeah, that, it's serviceable. Yeah, drive bolts replaceable. It takes about five or ten minutes. Um, I got a video on my website, speedbinders.com. I will get a link to that in the description. Okay, and that shows you how to replace that. Um, and, and just one more thing on impacts. Please don't use the big half inch impacts. Walt makes a uh, half inch about as big as this which is cool, that's fine. Three eighths, quarter inch actually works. Um, but they're really neat. They're not a lot more money than a normal binder. That's probably the biggest surprise. It's a good quality binder, 60, 70 bucks. You can get these picked up for $87. That's for the big one, 9,200. Yep. That is more than reasonable, especially for what you're getting, so. Well, thank Steve. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks thank for you. taking the time to uh, demonstrate sure. awesome product i'll get the uh link to the website the few videos steve has in the descriptions as always guys thanks for watching don't forget to like subscribe and comment and we'll catch you on the next one